Hi, I'm Randall Hoffman. I'm a Sarah and Frank McKnight Fellow at UT Southwestern Medical Center. And I'm going to tell you about work that's coming out of my lab in which we discovered a novel form of epigenetics that regulates the multicellular transition in yeast. In previous work, we discovered that there are actually dozens of proteins in yeast that have the ability to form prions, or purely protein-based elements of inheritance. And at the time, we really had very little idea what the function of those prions might be, or even if they had a function. To address that question, we took advantage of the fact that lots of those proteins were transcription factors, and we reasoned that by looking to see what genes those transcription factors regulate, we might be able to deduce what the function of prion formation might be. And when we looked at the five transcriptional regulators that are known to be prions in yeast, we found that in fact only one gene in the entire yeast genome was regulated by all five of those, and that gene was flow 11. So flow 11 encodes a protein that is the key determinant of multicellularity. And we typically think about yeast as these unicellular organisms, but in fact, in the wild, yeast frequently acquire multicellular growth forms. When we discovered that flow 11 was regulated by prions, we immediately thought we were onto something because flow 11 has a very long history of being regulated by epigenetic elements. The expression of flow 11 reversibly switches in clonal populations of yeast, and it's not really clear what all the different elements are that are causing that switching. The other th interesting thing about flow 11 is that it's turned on in response to stress. So when you think about prions, prions are of course protein folding phenomena, you can appreciate that they are inherently sensitive to stresses. And these stresses can perturb protein homeostasis and cause protein misfolding, and in the process, increase the frequency that some of those proteins will go on to form prions. And so we began to think if stresses are causing prion formation and stresses are causing flow 11 to turn on, might these prions actually be some of the epigenetic switches that are acting on flow 11? So we focused on just one of those transcription factors. Uh, it's a transcription repressor called MOT3. And we created an assay to isolate cells that contain the prion state of MOT3. And what we found was that those particular cells acquired multiple different kinds of multicellular growth forms that required flow of expression. So we knew right then that prion formation was acting as an epigenetic element that was marking those cells and causing them to differentiate and was responsible for those cells then uh, cooperating with each other by virtue of their shared inheritance of the prion. The next thing we did was we asked if, in fact, stresses caused MOT3 to form a prion. So we looked through a panel of different stress conditions, and what we found was, in fact, only one of those stresses had a significant effect on MOT3 prion conversion, and that stress was ethanol. Uh, specifically, when we exposed the cells to 12% ethanol, and this is a concentration that yeast are normally exposed to in the context of wine fermentations, the frequency that MOT3 became a prion increased about tenfold. So then we had a natural stress that induced prion formation. Um, of course, prions are these self-perpetuating elements, and we normally think about them in the context of disease. So the bigger question might be, how do cells get rid of them? So when we grew these MOT3+, plus, these prion-containing multicellular cells, uh, under low oxygen conditions, they quantitatively reverted back to the MOT3- minus state, the unicellular state. And the interesting thing about that, when you think about the yeast ecology, it makes a lot of sense because the cells are essentially turning on the prion whenever ethanol concentrations reach a maximum, and they switch to respiratory metabolism. They then burn off that ethanol and in the process deplete molecular oxygen from the atmosphere. So what we have in the end is two sequential environmental changes that are both turning on a heritable epigenetic element and then turning it off. And between those two, those two changes, that prion is causing the cells to acquire a multicellular growth form that we think is actually important for their survival.